I win my lane every game but my carry has a bad habit of dying randomly. If you are facing this problem then this video is for you. While it is true that often core players die randomly and end up throwing the game, there are decisions that you can make as a support to control the game. In this video I will be explaining all the decisions that I make in my game after the laning stage and how they impact the outcome of the game. So a quick recap for the laning stage. Initially I like to block the small camp and the reason is if enemy pulls this, the creep wave will go, my creep wave will go close to enemy's tower and then their carry will safely farm it while this guy on support he will be denying the creep experience and me as a support I will be forced to play in this area and it's gonna be risky for me. And I like to keep the hard camp unblocked. And the other thing that I like to do, I like to play on timers. 3 minutes I like to secure Lotus, 6 minutes I like to secure Power Rune and all of this is gonna be possible if I have hard camp unblocked. It is possible if hard camp is blocked but if hard camp is unblocked then I have so many moves that I can make in the lane which you will see in this video. And I like to use my mana a lot. Like you will see how I use mana so much and trade it with enemy's health. I have seen people not using their mana in the lane for like 3 minutes, 4 minutes and like Having 100% mana in the lane, it makes no sense. So, fighting with Wind Ranger, and you'll notice how I use my aircon shot here, dealing damage to wind, even though it's not even one minute yet. And here, I would like to know, show you one thing. So, usually, people now people have started un, uh, blocking the hard camp initially. So, I like to put sentry on 56 seconds. So, I have four seconds. To see if there is any sentry placed or not and if there is I can just take off the sentry in 4 seconds and have the hard camp unblocked in this first minute of the game. So 56 seconds I put the sentry and now I am able to unblock the camp. Now because I have hard camp unblocked you will see how I abuse it. Okay, fighting NP when I can. Using mana again to damage. Here. I know my Kree wave is gonna be dead and enemy Kree waves are pushing and this pull is not needed but you will notice what I do with this. So I pulled it and I know for sure enemy is gonna take aggro from me of the creeps and then they're gonna bring the wave back but it's gonna force enemy to play in a bad position. See? Again using my mana to damage, now NP is being forced to play on this side because I am pulling the camps. So like when they have to bring the Kree wave back to their side, I'm just dealing damage to them so that they cannot hit me back. If they do, then my creeps are gonna hit them. Again, I'm gonna pull this and uh, now see, because I pull this, I know NP is gonna come here, take creep aggro and bring the wave back. But this is gonna put NP in a really bad spot. Now NP has to walk all the way here to hit creeps to bring the wave aggro and he ends up in a torrent because he's in a, in a bad position. Good torrent from Kunkka. Pushback, Aircon Shard, Blood Grenade, nicely set up for kill. And all of this is possible because I am keeping them out of position. Like I'm forcing them to be out of position. And that is only happening because hard camp is unblocked. Otherwise, I cannot. So that's the importance of these things. The neutral camp blocks. And then pull it again. Kill Wind Ranger. Okay, usually what I like to do, 3 minute Lotus, I like to secure it. There are two ways to secure the Lotus, either by fighting enemy and keeping their health so low that they are not able to contest it. Or secondly, pushing the wave into enemy's tower so they are not able to avoid the creeps and come to Lotus. In this scenario, both position 5 and 1 were dead. So I decided to not waste my time and take Lotus myself because in this case enemy just cannot contest it. So me... Being smart, I decided to stack for my teammates. And remember, stack, stacking is really good and it just provides a lot of value to your mid laner or your off laner, whoever wants to farm it and also you get the bonus code and experience from it. But don't stack when you're supposed to be in the lane. Right now I'm stacking because enemy heroes were dead. My off laner can easily secure Lotus, can easily farm creeps. That is the reason I went to stack. If it is safe to stack, then only then you will go. Otherwise, you will stay in the lane and help your teammate. 
If you want to know every detail about the laning stage, I have talked about them in my previous video. I'll share the link in description with you guys. Do check them out. I'll quickly jump into the mid game now and show you how I make my decisions in a team fight and how they impact the outcome of the game. It doesn't matter, like this is a game where my carry was doing super bad. He has died 2 times in 3 minutes already and he dies like 19 times in this game. And that's really really bad for a carry. And still we end up winning this game. So what I want you to know is winning your lane, stacking, securing power rune, it's really good. It sets up the early game for your team but that's not enough. As a support you need to set up vision for your teammates in the mid game and you have to make good decisions in team fights. 18 minutes and we are down 70k net worth already. So here is our first team fight. So look at my positioning and notice how I don't throw all my spells instantly. So I am just chilling waiting here not doing anything. Most people what they do is as a support when they notice there's a fight happening first thing that comes to their mind is I wanna throw all my spells I wanna use everything right away no that's not how it should be your every spell that you use it needs to have a purpose there should be a proper reasoning so the reason why I'm not doing anything right now is because I know this bot is coming to use ultimate and troll and I have to use my spell in a way that I can cancel his ultimate so if I bushwhack him now, it's gonna stun him for one second and then he'll be free from bushwhack and then he's gonna bite my troll and troll is gonna die. So Instead, like what do you think is better? If I bushwhack him first and then he bites the troll or I just use bushwhack on him and then I cancel his bite and then stun him as well. Of course the second one because then I want his ultimate to be on cooldown and there's no need to rush right now. Second, my icon short, it's only gonna be helpful when it can bounce on multiple heroes. If I use it right now, it's just gonna hit one hero once and then there's gonna be no value from it. It's gonna deal no damage. So I'm just standing, waiting for them to use their spells and then I move. When they show up, now bushwhack, two heroes controlled, icon short and that's how this punch simply died. Why? Because I was super patient in a team fight and I used my spells when they were needed. Because of this, Pudge died, now they don't have any front line, Pango is getting controlled as well and they have to run back. From here we just simply win the team fight. Because I was super patient, I used my spells properly and Pudge killed their front liner, now they have nothing and they just end up losing the team fight. From here onwards they will just feed one by one because that's how pub works. They don't, people don't pay attention much and they just start feeding when they lose a team fight. We're just gonna use advantage of it. Over here you will see again bushwhack on two heroes, icon short on two heroes. So using my spells only when they can provide more value. Here I can use my icon bushwhack him but there is no need to right. If I bushwhack and icon him then the purpose of X mark torrent it's gonna fail. Like I don't wanna throw all our stuns and have no value. I want to use them one by one. Stunned. Now I'm waiting for Bench to use spell. And dead. Meanwhile my troll is just dying to two supports. But it's whatever. The enemy keeps coming one by one and just we take advantage of it and win team fight. And all of this started from the bottom fight. Okay, team fight one and casual my core feeding. Never mind that. Wisdom rune. So here you'll notice I have three observer wards and now I have to place Vian in a way that my teammates they can play the map properly. Now I'll also explain where and why I place Vian. But look at the timer right now, it's 21 minute 38 seconds. I like to play for every power rune as like people when they have bottle they like to stick power runes right. So this pango he has bottle. He has bottle yes. So basically I know for a fact that this guy is gonna come for power rune and power rune they're like they provide so much value in every situation in the game like it doesn't matter if it's early game, mid game, late game. If you have power rune you just you can just abuse it. 
like for example if you have haste you can take such a good team fight if you have double damage you're gonna again take a very good team fight invisibility really good either to run or to set up kills easily illusion good for dispel and all of this but like power rune they always 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 provide insane amount of value so i just want to play for power rune with my teammates and for that i'm just waiting smoked for power rune went top to check waiting for enemy pango to show up he's not showing up okay power rune is bottom move bottom see pango is also moving bottom right now if we're not playing for power rune and we're just ignoring it and playing the map doing random stuff this move would not be possible which we're about to do so stun pango spells used on him dead why because we are actively thinking about power rune and two supports die as well for the power rune now because of these these three kills it's gonna allow me to put vision on the map if all five heroes are alive on enemy and i have no information where they are i cannot simply walk into their jungle and place vision i'll either their their ward will see me and then they will come and kill me or they will just simply deward it because i'll ward under their vision check cliff if it's warded or not it's not so i put a ward observer over here i could have put it on the cliff as well but cliff forts are only placed when you can play around them but i know in this game we're not gonna play around cliff forts because i know my troll and my sniper they are just playing solo so there's like they're not gonna help me with vision thing so i just placed it over here it's really hard to get deworded why because if enemy puts sentry on the cliff it's gonna be out of their range most people they like to put sentry on the ground as well but i'm just hoping this doesn't get deworded okay one ward placed for this it's gonna show me if enemy is farming triangle or if they're moving on the bottom side so bottom side of the vision has been secured now I'm just gonna secure vision on the middle. Placing a ward in this side. If enemy farms this jungle camp, we can smoke and always go for a kill. And this vision is also this ward is also providing me vision of the mid lane. So if enemy is moving in the mid lane or farming this jungle or moving to the top power rune for the 24 minute, I'll see them. So I can see bottom, I can see mid. Now the last vision that's remaining is for the top. Again, one more smoke called, always keeping one smoke in inventory. So from 18 to 23 minutes, we took 8k lead from enemy. Like We were down 7k net worth and now we're up 1k net worth. Why? Because support is making moves on the map. Support is fighting properly. He has, like he's using spells properly. He's smoking for power on making teammates move. Like right now, see Pango's farming this jungle, we can see him. So this ward is pro providing a lot of information about what enemy team is doing. And based on this, these visions, we're going to make decisions in a team fight and how we want to play the map. Kunkka is pushing top and me being a good support, I am not hitting the tower because I don't want to reveal my position. So this is another mistake that literally happens in every bracket. Supports, they just show too much in the lane, hitting creeps, hitting tower, and they end up dying first. As a support, your positioning is really important. If you stay alive in team fight for a long time, you can provide so much value. So just hide in trees. Okay, push top and push, smoked, TP bottom. Why is this TP happening? Because we can see them in the map. The, right now, I can see Pango is mid. Wind Ranger is top. If you look at the mini map, I'll show you again. So we see Pango in this bottom rune. Uh, side we see rubik mid we see pango is mid again wind raider is showing top so we now we know if we jump on enemy heroes we're gonna like enemy team if they try to connect it's gonna take a lot of time so we just end up going on them and all of this information is possible because we have good vision placed on the map and why is good vision placed on the map because we were able to kill them and then we placed vision so that enemy cannot even see it Going on purge. Okay, I get controlled a lot, but it's fine. Uh, whatever, my team wins the fight anyways. One fight, get out. So right now, even though I, if I'm dead, I'm looking at every lane, making to see and where to go. So I end up going top. Why? Because it's 25 minutes. Night time, Roshan is going to be spawned in top lane so i don't want to give this to them so it's better to play 
on top lane if it's night time and bottom lane if it's daytime. So now I have two wards and I have to place them for Roshan. Look at right now. Again, this vision giving me this ward giving me vision of Rubik. Now I know this Rubik is gonna walk this path and come to top lane. Because of this information, I'm just gonna ward accordingly to find Rubik. Vision placed here. I know Rubik is gonna walk this path. My teammates, they will never go in until they see Rubik, so I just put a vision for them. So I can convince them to go and kill Rubik when he passes. Right now we see Rubik telling my core to go and catch him. Notice how I saved one ward. So I'm gonna use this ward in a team fight. So these wards are called basically team fight wards where you just place them on the ground to have good vision for the team fight and provide value to your team with vision. Going on Rubik. So because we're going on Rubik, now we're forcing enemy to react to us. My troll just died somewhere alone. Carry feeling in team fight, whatever. So here's a vision for the team fight. Controlling Pango. So now notice how I catch Pango here and I'm not hitting him. I'm just repositioning myself so I just don't die casually in a team fight. And here's a kill secured. And we just won team fight. Why? We didn't even have our carry in this fight. The only reason we won this team fight because I gave them too much vision. I started on tro uh, I started the fight on Rubik and I forced them to fight in our vision. So let's see. So this is enemy's vision. One right here, second one right here. So if we were fighting on this side where my troll did, we would have lost the fight. But because we forced the fight over here in our vision on our side, we were able to win the fight. And enemy, they were like super bad. They also didn't care about this thing that they didn't force us to fight in their vision. Rather, they got forced and they fought in our vision. So this is something you need to understand. In team fights, don't run into enemy if you are not super strong. Like if your heroes just cannot die, you're already stomping the game. Force, poke them and force them to fight under your vision. That's really important. Now because of all these moves, we're able to secure Rosh. I hope so. Mm. Yeah, troll respawns and we're going Rosh. Setting up planes. Again, a team fight's happening and I'll explain what happens in this team fight. Okay. So this Wind Ranger, he used BKB and he's hitting troll. Over here, instead of panicking, look at what I do. I just run away, reposition myself, put vision in a team fight again. I'm not hitting this Wind Ranger because I know it's useless. That's not what my hero is supposed to do. Just running away, repositioning myself, waiting for his BKB to be expired. One mistake, like this is one of the biggest mistakes that supports do when they don't know what to do in a team fight. Instead of repositioning, they just throw all their spells, start standing AFK, trying to right click enemy heroes, even though that's not even necessary. Play on your timers, that's really important. So, this Wind Ranger, he used all his BKB. When BKB is gonna be down, yeah, right now is my time. Now I wanna use my spells. I kited the enemy heroes and now I'm fighting on my terms again. This vision it's giving me he like I can see all five heroes via team fight vision. And I'm forcing enemy to play in my vision. Wind Ranger dead. Catching two heroes. Here I could have pushbacked and killed Pudge, but that's my bad. So basically from 18 minutes to 29 minutes in the span of 11 minutes we were down 7k net worth and we're now up 8k net worth in all of these team fights troll had no impact he would always die first and in just 29 minutes this guy has died 9 times that's like crazy so here's an another team fight we can see pango mid so that is why i know if i go front and catch this guy there's gonna be no problem because there's no pango i cannot die so I end up catching Pudge for my teammates and notice my positioning, I'm playing too front. Why? Because I know enemy teammates can, cannot connect right now. But as soon as I notice that like this Pudge is not dying, I reposition myself. Because now enemy team is gonna come and as a support I don't wanna f just die first. I wanna reposition and wait for enemy to come in our vision. This is our vision guys. So bringing team fight in your vision that's like really important thing. 
don't in, run into enemy always poke them and force them to come into your vision and take a fight so pango comes in rolling and again i'm not wasting any spell i'm just waiting for the right moment what's the right moment the right moment is if this budge he blinks in and bites somebody i'm gonna cancel his ultimate or if this wind ranger he starts running in to try and kill my teammate and doesn't use bkb i'm gonna bushwhack him i'm just gonna stop enemy from doing what their heroes what they like to do so here wind ranger does end up coming in and i bushwhack her it saves some time and because of this sniper lives for a moment otherwise if i didn't bushwhack wind ranger sniper would be dead here because of this sniper was able to deal a lot of damage to pango he ends up dying but because of this pango died again they're fighting in our vision it's really good for us and we end up winning the fight again So this was enemy's vision. The enemy team, they were supposed to force us to play in this fight, but they didn't because they are bad, but we were able to force them into our vision. And this is something that you can do as a support. If you're playing in the back line and not dying first, you can actually use your spells and force enemy, you know, poke them and force them to play in your vision. So I'm just going to fast forward here. Right now it's 40 minutes. Roshan is bottom. We have to play the bottom lane. Moving to bottom fast, there's a fight happening and my carry, he ends up dying. 40 minutes, he died 12 times. But it's fine. So here, I just end up killing the hero that I can. Going on Rubik because that's a hero I can kill right now. Trying to outnumber the enemy, it's 3v3 right now. Again, I'm not wasting any spell. Not hitting the Wind Ranger that's going on my Kunkka. Not wasting, like keeping, like not going in and not hitting enemy because I know if I go and hit, they're gonna stop hitting Kunkka and they're just gonna go on me and they're gonna kill me. So I'm just waiting. Waiting for his BKB to be expired, like on cooldown and down. As soon as his BKB is down, I just bushwhack him, control him, and we win the fight. There's no need to rush your spells. Just use them when you can and when it's possible. So right now the teammates are dead, so chasing Pudge, trying to kill him. And uh, meanwhile Sniper gets the Aegis and we end up killing Pudge as well. And all of this without our carry. So guys, if you are doing your job properly as a support, I'm telling you it doesn't matter if your mid laner is bad in some cases it will matter if they're hard griefing but if they're not having a good game it is fine you can win the game if your mid laner or off laner or maybe carry one of them is not giving impact because in the enemy team there's going to be such player as well you just need to focus on your game and just do your job properly if you're doing your job properly you will win most of your games another important thing that i would like to show here is Notice how my teammate they're hitting high ground but my positioning. So I'm basically hiding behind the trees. This tree it's making me hide like it's because of this tree I'm not revealing my position and because of this tree they cannot see me from the right side and because of this tree they cannot see me from the top side. So I'm just standing here next to my teammates while they're hitting racks and tower. And for enemy if I show you from enemy's point of view they don't see uh, Hurwing at all. But me, I'm standing next to my teammates. If anything happens, I'm gonna be able to provide value in this fight. So the reason is, if I am also standing there hitting this, uh, whatever, racks with my teammates, first thing that enemy team is gonna do, they're gonna kill me. Because supports, they're really easy to kill. And if they die first, it's really hard to provide control in a team fight. Of course, they need their supports to be alive in a team fight, so they're able to kite enemy heroes again and again. If I am hitting this Rax, I can easily end up dying. Rather, I'm just hiding here. And when Rax are done, I'm just gonna go back with my teammates. Simple. So one last thing and very important thing that I wanna talk about here is which is mindset and the tilt factor that you can avoid and win so many games. So right now, we see this NP devouring our vision and in this other vision, we can see him. And I'm telling my team that we need to go there don't let him deward this, don't let him stand in our vision like this. 
and I'm just getting frustrated that why my team is not doing anything like why are they not going and catching this guy so because I'm getting frustrated see how bad of a move I make this is not my job to go front <clears throat> as a support I'm supposed to stay behind but because my teammates because I feel like my teammates are not doing their job I'm trying to do something that is their job and not mine and because I do that I go front try to hex him get caught and end up dying first because I'm dying first in a team fight as a support I lose like it's literally it's like I'm literally useless basically if I'm dying first I did nothing in this team fight we end up winning this team fight because enemy team they were super bad they were fighting under Kunkas torrent storm and they just end up dying that's the only reason we won fight but the way the fight started it, it was like super 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 bad for us and uh, the major mistake was mine yes as a support I understand it's super frustrating that your teammates they're not doing their job but you as a support you're not supposed to go front like this I understand see my games I'm getting frustrated as well but that's not how it works this simple move could literally cost us the game honestly so I I won my lane I secured rune for my mid laner I stacked for my teammates I played super good in team fights but if at 45 minutes I do this one move it can cost me the game so discipline is really important in a game if you are getting tilted that your cores are not going front then don't go front in place of them wait for the moment if like if they're not going front just wait it's not jo your job to go front if you go in like this you die first then you're just giving the control of the game to enemy and you know you're just leaving it all on your teammates even after having so much lead we end up in a situation where we have to defend our ancient to win this game because my carry found different ways to test if we are capable of carrying him or not dota is a game where everyone has different roles and for supports if your hero is made to go front then go front for your teammates but if your hero is not made to go front then don't do it you have to play the game based on the strengths of your hero you are not going to win every lane you are not going to win every team fight so respect all of this and think about if you have a strong lane or a weak lane. Based on that, play your matchup differently. Similarly, in team fights, every time you use a spell, make sure your spell usage has a purpose. Like if you're using stun on somebody, it's not going to waste. It's providing some value to your teammates. If I talk about this game, I had two options. One, I go AFK play my troll all the game for dying 20 times in a game and just lose the game or ignore whatever the troll is doing and focus on myself and try to win doesn't matter how bad the situation of the game is if I am focusing on my game I will find ways to win the game but if I am too focused fighting my other players or heroes that why are they not doing their job then it's over I am not gonna learn how to win from a losing position and second thing is I'm just gonna give up most of the games and that is why I'm gonna have less than 50% win rate there are a few things that I want you guys to understand if you're being negative in a game for example your carry has died 10 times 20 times if you're just going gfk and talking shit to him you're just gonna lose the game and it's gonna tilt you for the next game as well and with this you will have like 50% less than 50% win rate because you're not even trying in most of your games if you're losing early game you're just giving up that's super bad instead look for ways and solutions to win the game even if you're down in net worth in the early game as well you're gonna start improving insanely when you're just gonna focus on your game and forget about how bad your teammates are playing or if somebody else is making mistakes because I'm telling you when you're playing your best game in Dora even in that game you're making like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 mistakes which you're not realizing if you focus on your game only you will real realize all of your mistakes and you will improve eventually and there's gonna be a point where you, you will just start winning all of your games why? because while everybody in your bracket they're busy talking shit to each other you're the one focusing on yourself and that's what is going to make you different from others in your bracket and it's gonna help you improve in Dota, there are things that your hero can and cannot do. 
for example i showed you how i was getting frustrated and i went in first in a team fight and i just tied first luckily we end up winning that fight and even though i was not being toxic towards my teammate in that game but the frustration could be seen on the gameplay right if you are thinking about what your teammates are doing your game will also reflect that so ignore whatever is happening and play to your potential play to what your hero can do and it's going to win you so many games if you're looking to improve your game understanding in any role i offer private coaching sessions which can help you improve your skills and achieve higher rank just as they have for my previous students if you're interested you can join my discord linked in description please make sure to subscribe and like the video do let me know if you have any feedback otherwise good luck with your games and have a nice day